Okay, so we're looking at the second year stats and mechanics textbook, and we're doing exercise 4D. So chapter four is on moments, and 4D is on center of mass. Uh, we'll get question five. So a plank AB has mass 24, um, so sorry, 24 kilograms, and length 4.8, and that's all shown to us there in that diagram. Um, we have got a 15 kilogram mass at C, and we're given the distance AC. Okay. Um, Right, so actually for this one, for part A, the plank is modelled as a uniform rod, and then part B they then decide to reevaluate that. So for part A, so let's get our own sketch of what's, what's going on there. So we've got this plank AB. Um, it's held up by these two ropes, so there's going to be tension in the rope at A, and tension in the rope at B. Okay, um, we've got the mass that they've added at C, which was 15 kilograms, so it has a weight of 15 G. Um, and we're initially modeling it as a uniform rod. So the actual mass of the rod, which is 24 kilograms, so its weight is 24 G, is gonna be through the center. So let's label on those lengths. So they told me that that was 1.4 meters. And then they've told me that I'm modeling, the part A at least, we're modeling, modeling it as a uniform rod. So if the total length of the, the rod is 4.8, that is going to be 2.4, half of that, okay? And find the tension in the rope at B. Okay, so if I want the tension in this rope, I think the most sensible thing to do is going to be to take moments about A. Okay, so um, if I take moments about A, I have got two forces. So if my pivot is at A, I've got these two forces that are both going to be trying to turn it clockwise. So the 15G force times the distance of 1.4 plus the 24 g force times the distance of 2.4. And then I'm also going to have the tension at B is going to be the only force trying to turn it anti-clockwise. So the tension at B is what I'm trying to find, and that's the full length of the rod. So that's 4.8 meters away from A. So that's going to be fine. We've got just one unknown in there. So 15 times 1.4, so 21G plus 24 times 2.4, 57.6G is 4.8 times the tension at B. So I'm getting that to be 770.28. You could leave this in terms of G, that'd be absolutely fine. They've given their forces in terms of G. Um, I'll just work it out as a, a full value. So I get that the tension at B to be 160.475, so 160 newtons to three significant figures. I'm just going to check that before we carry on. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's just go, go back to that. Okay, so, but um, yeah, there was nothing to say that you could just leave in terms of G for that. Okay, so. The plank is now modelled as a non-uniform rod. Um, with the new model, the tension in the rope at A is 25 newtons greater than the tension in the rope at B. I think this calls for a fresh diagram. Okay, so I've still got the tensions in the two ropes. I've still got the um, nine, no, sorry, 15 kilogram mass um but now i no longer know that the actual um mass of the rod is is working halfway along it. in fact it's it's not going to be halfway along it now um but what they do tell me is the tension at a is 25 greater than b okay so so if i call the tension at bt the tension at a is t plus 25. Okay, so we don't need any subscripts because I've, I've got one in terms of the other. Okay, um, and then I've also got the mass of the rod 
which is 24 kilograms, so the weight is 24 G, and I just, I just don't know where that is. I know that that is still 1.4, so they haven't changed the, the mass at C. Um, okay, so hopefully we've now got enough information um, to be able to find the distance they want, which is that distance there. Um, right, so I'm going to take moments about A. If I take moments about A, though, I am going to have two unknowns. I'm going to have this distance and I'm going to have the tension here. But there's, there's a sort of a common technique that often crops up in these, um, these moment questions, which is before you worry about moments, resolve vertically. So if you get an unusual question, you're stuck on it. Just think, well, before I worry about moments, can I, you know, can I resolve the forces either horizontally or more likely vertically? And if I do that, the downward forces on that um, plank are the 15G and the 24G, and they must equal the upward forces of T plus 25 and then plus the other T, okay? So uh, what's that going to be? So 39G is 2T plus 25, so if I do 39 9.8 minus 25, I get 2t is 357.2. So I get t is 178.6, so 179 newtons. Okay, right. So now I'm going to take moments. Get this all on one screen. Okay, so I'm going to take moments about a. There will be, and you could take moments about B or about this point here, but I think A, a seems the most sensible to me. Okay, so if I'm taking moments about A, both of these forces are going to be trying to turn it clockwise. Okay, so they will be my clockwise moments. So the 15G force is 1.4 meters from A. The 24G force is x meters from a that's the distance i'm trying to find and i've then got this force which i now know is 179 um which will be trying to turn it anti-clockwise so basically we're imagining that there's it's pivoted at a so imagine a is the center of your clock face which way are these forces going to be trying to turn it okay and it's in equilibrium it's in equilibrium so they must equal each other so force of 179 newtons times the distance which is the whole length of the rod so 4.8 okay so now we've got an equation the only unknown is x so we will be able to solve this so 15 times 1.4 um let's do it as a decimal so i get that to be 205.8 plus Two three five point two x is eight five nine point two. So two three five point two x is is six and three point four. So x is hopefully. 2.778, so 2.78 meters. Okay, so we can see if that seems sensible. Um, yeah, I would say as far as I can judge, it seems, yeah, seems right. The, the rod is 4.8, 2.78. What we just need to do is just check. Okay, so 2.77, so I'm out. I think that's probably, well, I know why that is. That will be because, oh no. Oh, sorry, I was thinking we got the 160 wrong, that was a different, a different part of the question, right. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably because I used, um, I, I rounded T, so do watch out for that. I would hope if this was an exam question, they'd, they'd cover both um, answers, but I rounded T to three significant figures. So if I'd have left that unrounded, I should have got 2.77. So just in case anyone is watching this without any sound, let's just change that to 2.77. We won't do the whole video again just for that.